Hey, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for CreativeCow.net. In my opinion, one of the coolest effects in After Effects is displacement mapping. You may not know it or have even heard of this effect, but you've definitely seen displacement effects in film and television tons of times. Whether it's a shimmer effect added to a shot to make it look like the sun is beating down on a city, or a force field that distorts the object it's protecting, displacement maps are a big part of creating all sorts of special effects. And before I get into this, I have some bad news. If you're not using a pro version of After Effects, you probably won't have the displacement effect. But hey, it never hurts to learn something new, especially if you might need it at a later time. Now generally speaking, a displacement map is an image or movie that's used to distort another image or movie by using RGB values as the source of the distortion. By that I mean that we can use the colors and brightness of one image to push pixels of another image in a certain direction kind of like this. As you can see, the lighter areas push the pixels in one direction and the darker areas push them in another. Also, the closer you get to 50% gray, the less distortion there is overall. So what makes an image a displacement map? Well, when you get down to it, not much. It's really just normal footage that you tell another layer to use for displacement. Let's break down the example I just showed you. Here I am in After Effects with a colorful silhouette of a person. That's our Mr. Groovy layer. In the background, I have a grayscale animation I've created with a wide range of dark and light areas. Let's apply the displacement map effect to Mr. Groovy. Now that's extremely important. The effect needs to be applied to the layer that's being distorted, not the one being used as a displacement map. I'll select Mr. Groovy here in the timeline and then choose Effect, Distort, Displacement Map. Immediately, Mr. Groovy is distorted, but not in the way we want him to be. What's happening is that our Mr. Groovy layer is trying to use itself as a displacement map. This is After Effects' default setting and something that you're rarely going to use. We'll need to make a few changes to make this work, so let's get to it. With Mr. Groovy selected, let's take a look at what we have in the effects controls. First thing we need to do is change the property called Displacement Map Layer. Using the pull-down, we'll tell After Effects to use our Lines Background Animation Layer as the source of the displacement. Instantly, the look of the displacement changes as Mr. Groovy is now grooving to the background instead of himself, though it might be hard to tell at this point. The next set of properties we want to look at are the Use for Horizontal Displacement and Use for Vertical Displacement. These two pull-downs allow you to choose what channels are being used to displace the pixels. It can use things like the red, green, or blue channels of an image or even its lightness and saturation to push the pixels around. In our case, horizontal is currently set to use the red channels and vertical is currently set to use the green channels, which really doesn't matter because in a grayscale image, every shade of gray has equal parts red, green, and blue. So if we chose a color channel or even a lightness channel, it really wouldn't make a difference. On the other hand, if we're using a colorful image as the source of our displacement, it would make a difference. The color of the pixels would control the direction in which the pixels were displaced. In this example, I'm using the green channel to control the vertical displacement. So anything being distorted by green pixels will go vertically in one direction, and anything not being distorted by green pixels will go in the opposite direction. Anyway, we're just using a grayscale image, so let's just leave these alone. Next, let's take a look at the Maximum Horizontal and Maximum Vertical Displacement properties. In a nutshell, these properties control the maximum amount of distortion that will take place on each channel. Higher numbers yield more distortion. I'm going to set each of these to 10. That should do a pretty good job. For the next property called Displacement Map Behavior, we have three choices. They are Center Map, Stretch Map to Fit, and Tile Map. By default, after Effects chooses Center Map, which positions the displacement map over the center of the image that you're distorting. So the only areas that will be distorted are the areas where the displacement map and the distorted image overlap each other. Now in our case, this makes absolutely no difference, because Mr. Groovy is 640 by 480, which is the same exact dimensions as our displacement map. And in fact, none of these options will have any effect for that very same reason. These settings become useful only when your displacement map and the layer being displaced have different dimensions. So let's take a look at examples of that. Here we have Mr. Groovy as we've seen him at 640 by 480. However, our grayscale displacement map layer is much smaller. Right now, our displacement map effect is set to use the default setting of center map. As you can see, if I turn up the maximum displacement values, only the area at the center is being distorted. Alright, 
Let's change the displacement map behavior from center map to stretch map to fit, which takes the background layer and interprets it as something that looks kind of like this. Oh, by the way, you won't actually see this large background that I'm showing you here. It's just for display purposes to make my point clear. All this happens under the hood in After Effects, so you won't see anything but the results of the displacement. Let me turn off the background layer so you can see things a little more clearly. Just so you know, you don't actually need to have your displacement map visible for displacement to work. It just has to be present in the composition. Also, it doesn't even need to be anywhere near the layer that you're distorting in the timeline or in the comp window. So long as it's in the composition, it can be used. Finally, let's set the displacement map behavior to Tile Map, which fills the layer with as many copies of the map as can fit. After Effects will interpret the displacement map to look something like this. Now again, you won't see this tiling. This is just my way of showing you what's going on under the hood. And let me turn that background off. When you start turning up these maximum displacement values, you get some really trippy looking stuff. Dude. Anyway, back to our main example here. The next property we have to play with is the edge behaviors wrap pixels around property, which basically decides if the pixels should repeat themselves should they run off the screen. So if I turn up my maximum horizontal displacement to a really high value, you can see that the pixels wrap around to the other side of the screen. Unchecking the edge behavior option turns this behavior off. Okay, I'm going to undo all of that. The last property here is the expand output property, and this is a new property to After Effects 7. By default, it's set to on, and that's fine since in our case it really makes no difference. However, so you know what it does, here's a quick explanation. In this example, we have this 800 by 600 pixel blurry grayscale image with the word test on it, which will be our displacement map. We also have this 640 by 480 rainbow gradient image, which will be the image that we're going to be distorting. As I mentioned, the displacement map is larger than the rainbow image, and that's important. If I activate the displacement map effect, you can see that the distorted edges are cut off at the boundaries of the rainbow image. No matter what we do, it can never extend past 640 by 480. However, in After Effects 7, if your displacement map layer is larger than your image layer, as it is here, expand output will allow the displacement map effect to render the displaced pixels outside the bounds of the image layer. So if we check this option, the boundaries expand to the dimensions of the displacement map. In other words, by activating this feature, After Effects is able to expand the distorted image so that it can flow into a larger space than its original boundaries. Nice new feature, right? So what do you do if you're working in After Effects 6.5? Are you out of luck? Not really. There is a solution for this, but it requires a little extra work. If you're working in After Effects 6.5, you'll need to pre-compose the layer you're distorting. Pre-composing moves layers from the current composition into a new sub-composition and then nests the pre-comp in the current one. Select the rainbow gradient layer in the timeline and choose Layer, Pre-Compose. In the Pre-Compose dialog, I'll name the new composition Rainbow Pre-Comp. From the options, choose the Leave All Attributes options, which leaves any keyframes or effects in the current composition, but moves the layer into the new composition. Also, activate the Open New Composition option and click OK. As you can see, a new composition has been created, the same dimensions as our rainbow gradient image, which is again smaller than our main composition. Now if we jump back into our main comp, we'll see two important things. The first is that our rainbow gradient layer has been replaced with our new rainbow pre-comp nested here in the timeline. The second and more important thing is that there is currently no difference from the look of the original displacement. The distorted rainbow image is still being cut off by its boundaries. What we need to do is expand the boundaries of the rainbow gradient composition, and that's pretty easy. Let's quickly jump back into our rainbow pre-comp and choose Composition, Composition Settings. Set the dimensions to 800 by 600, the same dimensions of our displacement map, and then choose OK. Now jumping back into our main composition, as you can see, the rainbow pre-comp is now extending past the original boundaries. OK, I really went off on a tangent there, so let's jump back to Mr. Groovy here in After Effects 7. With all the changes we made, do a quick RAM preview, and there you go. Dance, little man, dance. Anyway, before I end this, I want to mention that for the most part, these properties are keyframeable, which means that they can be animated to some degree. I should also mention that while displacement mapping seems pretty easy once you understand it, there are a couple of pitfalls, and we'll cover those in part two of this tutorial. For now, though, this should get you started.
Don't forget, you can download the example files for this podcast at www.creativecow.net forward slash AEPodcast. Once again, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for creativecow.net.